So it is official. Anthony Joshua will be defending his IBF, WBA, IBO heavyweight championships against Alexander Povetkin, the Russian, and is scheduled for September 22nd in Wembley. This will be the third time Joshua is um, fighting in Wembley, but it will be his second time headlining an event there. The last time he was there was against Vladimir Klitschko, where he produced one of the greatest heavyweight night boxing has seen in quite some time. Um, obviously, most of you watched the fight. Um, and yeah, it's exciting. Now, there's going to be two press conferences for the fight. One scheduled in New York and one's going to be in Wembley on Wednesday. So the New York press conference is going to be tomorrow. Now, that one's going to be exciting because if you guys just watch this MTV here, it kind of breaks it down as to what the press conference will be all about. Um, it's going to be announced in the fact that this fight would be on the Zen. And um, the DAZN platform will also be announced with um, Eddie announcing the fighters that would be on the platform. There's lots of news about um, the top fighters who are being announced. And the, I'm really excited for this um, press conference tomorrow because um, Eddie also spoke about the the contract between Wilder and Joshua being announced. But I'm going to get in all into that later on. Um, now, because... <laughs> and it's funny because people's there's a lot of fanboys that their realities or their fantasy worlds are about to be crushed, and I mean crushed because one the the fighters the the zone platform that they're all hating on is about to be announced with top level fighters. Secondly, you also have Anthony Joshua fighting on the zone, which is bound to get people to sign up. Secondly, um, and the third thing is, um. There's also the idea that, oh, you know what, the, the Zoom platform is going to fail, blah, 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 yada. Well, here you have it. You know, it's coming right in your face and these people are about to, these people are going to be, like, they're, they're going to need to be put on, like, a suicide watch, honestly. But anyways, that's for another thing. We're going to come back to that later. We're just going to quickly look at the fight, the pedigree of this fight is, obviously, Josh is the taller man, 6'6", six, six, has got 82-inch reach. Um, this will be Josh's sixth defense of his title. Obviously, after his uh, first world title fight against Charles Martin, he's been in with Dominic Brazil, Eric Molina, had um, uh, defense, voluntary defense against Vladimir Klitschko, where he also captured the WBA title. He had a defense against Carlos Tak uh, Takam. Uh, Joseph Parker was a unification and now Alexander Povetkin. Now people could say, oh, Povetkin is a cream puff, blah, 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 blah. This man is an Olympic gold medalist. He's only 34 and he's only lost against Vladimir Klitschko. Now, um, if you want to also validate yourself, people say, oh, you know what? All the other boxing organizations, it's all fraud and it's all based, based on how much you can pay. The Ring Magazine has no favoritism and it's based on your um it's based on fighters ratings and stuff like that alexander povetkin is ranked number third prior to this fight jo uh, joseph parker was rated at number three so after this fight comes september 22nd anthony joshua would have been with alexander povetkin joseph parker dylan white dominic brazil four fighters in the ring magazine top top uh top 10 and if Deontay Wilder does choose to take the fight April 13th, he'll be with top five fighters in the Rig Magazine. And this is all excluding Vladimir Klitschko, who also was, is an all-time great. So yeah, make of that what you want. Your other fighter here has only fought one guy here who is what, rumored about 48 years old. But we're going to get to that in another time. Um, we're going to take a look at the resume of Alexander Povetkin. He's only been stopped. Um... His only first loss was against um, Vladimir Klitschko. He's never been stopped. In um, He's 6'2", 75-inch reach. Uh, Povetkin, obviously, is Russian. He's been with some uh, decent names. Uh, Christian Hammer, he's decent. Uh, Andrew Denko, he's a decent fighter. Uh, Yon Dorpa, 
he is very durable and he was able to stop him so that's quite you know that's um i think dopa has only been stopped in two fights and that's against um Povekin and also against uh, wilder i believe so he's been able to call us to come that was a great fight these guys traded leather for the most of the fight but to come got stopped with like a left hook uppercut or something like that mano shaw of defense, defense fight. yeah klitschko was obviously his first loss that was like it was just it was a that was a bad fight klitschko was leaning on him and stuff like that so oh well where's jake so honestly in the heavyweight division after um anthony joshua povetkin has the second best resume he's been with russian and shigaev mark hawk um asim rachman but this was a washed up of asim rachman um i mean he was going towards the end really so yeah he's been in with chris bird eddie chambers this was when these guys were still in and eddie chambers was undefeated when they fought and he uh, he'd be on a unanimous decision uh, larry donald um yeah so he has a an excellent resume he has an excellent resume in the in the division he's been fighting at least decent opposition or through his tom leo leo nolan yeah this guy is, is decent and beat my knockout boy he's, he was yeah uh nicola fourth eye i think this guy fought on deontay wilder as well he's a cream puff but um but yeah that's um alexander pavekin um usually the point i'll do a fight review for this um later on this is just what um joshua had to say he says i can't wait to get back in the ring at the end of march it feels like a long time ago now um, that's the last time Joshua was in the ring. Povetkin is a serious challenge, and I do believe that. And I was prepared meticulously. He has such pedigree, and only a fool would underestimate what he brings to the table. Yeah, I know a couple of these people here, fools. But anyways, um, Joshua says he will push himself to the breaking point to make sure he's in a pick condition for another huge fight in British boxing at Wembley Stadium. Uh, training hasn't stopped and this is actually quite significant because there's a couple of pictures that's come out of Joshua looking a little slimmer and stuff like that so obviously during this off period he's not gained weight or anything but then again this all pictures we can't really see until he steps up for the weigh-in and we see him in training um, and uh, yeah Povekin says that the battle for the world title has always been his goal he fought um, I fought for the moment to face the strongest in the world and on September 22nd, he get his opportunity. Joshua has four belts and he wants them all. I'm glad that our fight will finally take place. The meeting of two Olympic gold medalists in the ring is destined to be a breathtaking event. I can't wait. And Hearn says, I can't wait for Joshua to return to Wembley on September 22nd for what I believe will be one of the biggest tests of Anthony Joshua's career. Honestly, Joshua is fine excellent level of competition excellent level of competition and you know what because we all but most of these fanboys don't appreciate and even some of us living right now don't appreciate i mean i was talking to my one of my facebook groups and a couple of people were like oh they miss um evander holyfield mike tyson days and i and i said you know what doing those guys times yeah there were people that slated this guys and said they were cream puffs and they they, they, they were terrible fighters and they were appreciating guys like Larry Holmes, uh, appreciating they're like, oh, they missed the Muhammad Ali era, that this guys don't know how to fight. And this is exactly what was happening right now. We're, we're witnessing good fighters just walk by us because we keep hanging on to the past or thinking that these guys are not good fighters. Anyone that says that a boxer that choose to go into the ring is a cream puff or whatever it is or is a bum then you're stupid because you've never you don't know what it is like to be in the ring i box myself and i know how how difficult it is to go in somewhere and watch another man smash your face in so for you to call someone a bum and say oh you know what this guy sucks blah 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 well, son, you haven't gotten into the ring to fight either, either ways. You can't even get into a street fight for talking. So, anyways, that's for another thing. That's for another video. I'm going to come up on a video and do one about um, Eddie Hearn's platform on the Zern. So, make sure you keep out for that. Tell me what you guys think about this fight. I think it's a great fight. I think Povetkin poses a lot of difficult uh, threats uh, with the hooks. It's going to be a kind of a similar fight to the Takam fight. But just that I don't think... Um, Povetkin will be as difficult to catch as Takam was. 
Takam was really elusive. He had like a lot. It was bobbing and weaving most of the time, and he was coming in with the headbutt. Now, Povetkin is going to do the same thing, but I think Povetkin will be a little easier to hit than um, than Takam was. And I don't think I think Povetkin's got a durable chin. He got dropped a couple of times by Klitschko in that fight. I think like four or five times in that fight. But um, yeah, but Joshua hits really hard, and when he gets uh, I mean, against Price, I think Price also rocked Povetkin as well. So, if um, and if that happens against if if, if forget Povetkin gets rocked that way against uh, that he got rocked against Price, I can see Joshua just jumping on him and stopping him. I have Joshua winning the match by stoppage. I'm gonna say uh, between round seven. I don't see Povetkin being able to take raise the pace of the fight at a high level. Um, I think he usually has like a, like a sort of like burst burst and then he takes like little time off but I think if Joshua just has a good jab and one two and the uppercut would be so critical in this fight because Povetkin leans down and I can just see I can see this match almost getting stopped by an uppercut but like I said that would be done in a fight review let me know what you guys think about the fight. Lots of Wilder fanboys were all about this fight and saying, oh, the fight's not happen happening and all that kind of shit. Well, this is in your face, breaking your fantasy worlds. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you um, leave a like on the button if you uh, hit the like button if you like the video. And subscribe and share. It's MC Boxing Amount.